All right, welcome back to Off Later Crew. Here we are again, Tactical Santa, <laughs> since it's uh, getting close to that time of year. Hey, we got some stuff here sent to us by Brian R. And, uh, you know, times like these, it's hard to get ammo, and we feel really privileged to be able to get something like this. Uh, they don't make it anymore. It's uh, three inch mag three inch magnums, uh, 870 grain. And uh, IXL DGS. Not sure what the IXL is, but the DGS is probably dangerous game slugs or the equivalent of. The owner, before he passed away, I think that's why the company's out of business, uh, said to sight these in at 25 yards. They're made for grizzly bears or whatever is coming at you. So 25 yards is what you're supposed to sight them in at, according to him. Okay. Well, we're about 25 yards from our target. And uh, Dougie's got his ballistic vest on under his Free Britney shirt. <laughs> and we're going to see if we can do some damage. See if we can do something worth watching. It might kick a little bit, Danny. I guess got to warn you. Yeah. We got our, uh, our pee pad on. Okay. That'll help. We're going to see if we can dot the eye there. Okay. Heavy slug. We don't know where it's going to land yet. <laughs> Okay, hit it. All right, here we go. Oh, good thing he had a helmet on. Okay, first I've got to ask, how was the recoil on that? That uh, was pretty stout. Okay. Yeah. Felt like a two ounce slug. <laughs> Traveling at about 1,200 feet per second. <laughs> anyway, um, it's a heavy slug. My point aim was here, and we hit here. So we're going to undress Doug a little bit here. We'll see if it's in there or not. Keep These are hard cast lead. I, did I mention that already? No, you didn't. I don't oh, think. okay. So they're made to go through a bear skull or um, Cape Buffalo head. I don't know. All right. Well, oh, all the way through that one. And oh, oh. so we did not capture that one. Those are, these things are mean. Okay, I don't know. I didn't know if that was already there or not. Mm. Whatever it is, he's got, definitely got a hole through it. Yeah. Okay, here comes shot number one, cruising along at 1,200 feet per second. The full rifling has given the slug a lot of spin, so we have really good stability. It just shot a little bit low. Danny's shotgun is sighted in using just one ounce Foster slug, so it's kind of interesting to see the the deviation between the two very different types of ammo. Danny should only have to adjust his aim just a slight bit to get it on target if the ammo shows consistency. Okay, we got the uh, the tactical ballistic ice there. One gallon of ice with a vest behind it. Because I think these, this may go through that chunk of that block of ice. What do you think? Uh... <laughs> I don't know. After that last shot, it feels like it will. I'm, uh, I'm hoping to capture one, you know, so we can see what the slug looks like after hitting ice. Okay, uh, I'm ready when you are. All right, we're going for that uh, circle. Okay, gotcha. Here we go. Holy Bang. smoke. Look at that vest went 50 feet beyond it. Danny brought up his point of aim about an inch, and now he's right on target. From here on out, we should be able to get a good idea just how accurate this slug really is. We were smart this time and put the Kevlar vest behind it so we could capture it. And it carried the vest about 30 feet beyond the table. Yeah, and compressed. Jeff will show you on the tabletop what they look like. But uh, there was a stem in there. Yep. Maybe that's part of uh, making the recoil tolerable. Yeah, it kind of acts like a cushion. I'll tell you what, that's got a pretty good thump to it. I, I'm amazed, though, how the nose of it isn't damaged or anything like that. Okay, let's see what it does to the lead plate. What's your guess? Uh, as hard as these are hitting, it might punch through. 
That's what I'm thinking. I think these have a very good chance of punching through. That hard lead, a uh, little different than the soft lead, those 1050 grain ones were soft, pure lead. This sucker's a lot harder. It hardly deforms at all. After seeing how it survived that ice. Yes, yeah. Hard. We'll see if we can catch another one. Okay, I'm ready. All right. We're gonna put it right in the moss. Okay. Uh, I think it went through. I thought it went all the way through, but... Are you gonna help me do this? Huh? <laughs> you gonna help me do this? She wants to eat some lead. <laughs> No. So, what happened? Well, it was pretty much on target. That's what's left of the M. So it was maybe a tiny bit to the left. No, it was, I think it was just a little low. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. We were at an angle, weren't we? Yep. Okay, well, this is what we found on the table. There's our slug. At least part of it. That might be another part another of it. Another part, another part, and bits and pieces. That one came out of the back of here. See, that's almost. That almost is called busted. spalling. That is actual spalling. When you got parts of the lead or steel, or whatever, breaking off the back, that's spalling. Pieces of the armor. That's why the vest went flying back. Okay, so that. That would have been nasty to get hit by. Even though it didn't go through, it kicked lead out the back. Except for that one. <laughs> That's the deepest dent in there. Yeah, it came very close to going through though. But it splattered lead probably a good 10 feet. Little pieces of lead laying around. That's why we set these up at an angle. Yep. And they're right, girl. Come on. <laughs> get there. Come on. Come here. See? See what Daddy did? <laughs> the 30 pound lead plate is a pretty consistent target we use in testing. It's actually really difficult for these large diameter lead projectiles to pass through the lead plate. We have in the past been able to penetrate it using uh, slugs made out of like brass or steel. Ah, the infamous uh, wet magazines. And it, it seems that I think these might go through. Um, better stack two stacks, huh? Yeah, I'd, I'd say we better use two. One we, stack will generally stop a foster slug. Just happened to have two. <laughs> then we got Kevlar behind that in case it goes two through. Of these Kevlar and then dug for backup. Yep. The difference in this one, we're going to use a smoothbore, see how these perform out of a smoothbore, since that is uh, something they claim to have been able to do. Yeah. Same accelerator, different barrel. Yep. So Are we'll you see, ready? See if our point of aim changes. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Wow. Okay, I think it went through. I immediately noticed that it shot a little to the left. Not sure why. Yeah. Maybe it's not as stable without spin. Hmm. Well, elevation was good. Yeah. Windage was off. California shot to the left. Uh-huh. All right. We got full pass through here. Wow. And then full pass through again. Second stack. Full pass through again. Yep. I'm glad I put the vest behind there. Let's see what we got here. Yep, got her. Let's see if we can. That vest has been shot up, but it still does its job of catching stuff. There we are. Okay. Oh, okay. and very similar to the ice one. So the, you would, I, you know, I was thinking when I first saw these that it was going to act like a Diablo with that space there to stabilize it, but when it's com compressed like that, it, it loses that. Diablo-ness, if that's a word. <laughs> so it just becomes a really big bullet shape, you know? So I'm, I'm, I haven't really reviewed the high speed of that shot, but I bet it's not flying very straight without spin, which is probably why it, it wasn't very accurate. But at yeah. 25 yards, it's accurate enough to 
defend you from a bear, I guess. They claim rifled or smoothbore. Now this shot, using the smoothbore, kind of surprised me because it shot so far to the left compared to using the rifled barrel. Now at the time, I really thought that the deviation was due to instability of the slug, but it was still surprisingly stable in flight. Same shooter, same gun, same optics, different barrels, and different results. Okay, million dollar question. Will a car or truck door protect you from a two ounce slug? Hard cast lead. We got Doug behind there. I think he, he's feeling pretty safe. Where are you going to be shooting? Pretty much uh, center mass of Doug. Okay, gotcha. I'm lined up good. Whatever I'm ready. That red laser dot is. Okay, I see it. Here we go. Oh! Okay, we're back using the rifled barrel. Uh, we wanted to do just one test to see if the slugs were stable using the smoothbore. Now cars make pretty good concealment, but if the person shooting at you knows basically where you are, the bullets or slugs in this case can still hit you. Well, the short answer is a door would not protect you at all probably not from a 22 either and it uh, tore through some mechanism back here too oh wow thick get back, get back. yeah look at that that's optic that man. was fortuitous that was part of the window i took the glass out so we didn't have that contaminating the range yep but that's a good uh just tore that steel almost eight and, inch Yep. It's a Ford Ranger, so it's a metric. I'm not going to convert. <laughs> about 3.7 millimeter. Knocked his hat off. But, let's see here. Oh, there it is. Hold that, Doug. Ah. Jeez. Again, another pretty shot of this that still still stops, you know? So all the people that say that Kevlar vests are compromised after one shot, yeah, they'll, they'll keep on stopping things. It even mangled up like that. Man, it is fused to it. Look how much it mushroomed. It's still pretty warm. Yeah. Jeez. Brutal. Yeah, don't hide behind an 84 Ranger door. <laughs> Even if you have a Kevlar vest. Rifle barrel still? Yes. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Oh. This test gives you a pretty good idea of the penetrating power of a hard cast lead slug like the Dixie DGS. The slug had very little expansion and passed through the gel without much resistance. When the slug eventually hit the Kevlar vest and Doug wearing it, it still had plenty of energy left. Okay, so it went through the gel easily. Yeah. 16 in, is that 16 or 18? I don't know. Uh, should be 16. Okay, we need like a 40 inch block of gel, I think. <laughs> and then we caught the slug in this in the vest. Knocked Dougie on his if he had one. <laughs> on his butt if he if he had a butt. Yeah. And there's the slug again all compressed again. Slightly mushroomed. Yeah. Okay. That's very why didn't it mushroom when they hit the ice? That's what I don't understand. That's what I don't understand. Good engagement with the rifling, you can see. Okay, so what are your okay? What are your thoughts on these things? Uh, as far as <clears throat> a dangerous game slug, I think it'd be great. It's uh, too bad they're not, they don't make them anymore. No. It is. Uh, I think people are going to see this like that is exactly what I need in Alaska or 
uh, Jurassic Park or what, whatever. Yeah, it, it's gonna it's it's gonna slow down or stop a grizzly with no problem. Um, if you're out hunting dangerous game, yes. If you're out hunting normal with uh, slugs and a shotgun, you better be fast to load one of these in if you got something charging at you. What are your thoughts, Doris? What do you think? <laughs> no. I'm excited. Kevlar helmet. Uh, sent to me by my daughter and son-in-law. Thank you, Denise and AJ. Told you we'd get around to it. <laughs> uh, That's yeah. like a, a GI military... Military issue. Yeah, yeah. Genuine GI equipment. Yep. We're, and we're going to shoot it with one of these slugs, right? Yep. Where are you going to shoot at? We're going to try to put one right about here. Okay. Will that helmet protect you from a two-ounce hardcast lead slug? That's what I want to know. As hard as they hit, even if it stops it, it's going to hurt. Oh, it's going to break your neck, I think. You have a reverse whiplash. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay, I'm all ready. Here we go. Whoa. That thing was strapped on, too, wasn't it? Yep. I was really excited about this test because we've never shot a, you know, a Kevlar helmet like this before with, with anything. But seeing the high-speed camera results blew my mind. Now I doubt this helmet's rated to stop rifle rounds. It would probably stop handgun rounds and things like fragments from grenades really well. But wow, seeing that two-ounce slug impact it and almost turn his face into a taco just <laughs> just was something I did not expect to see. But did the slug penetrate the helmet or not? It's hard to tell in the slow motion footage. Look at that. Brutal. That I don't think he would survive that. No. Unless that, you're that, dug and you're made yeah. out of rubber. Yeah. But it did not go through. Really? We got some, uh, eh, probably friction against Dougie's noggin there, but it tore the cloth. There is no, no pass through. Jeez, that, and that would have caved in your head. Oh yeah. Jeez. That, that was definitely. These things are monsters. That's, that's one thing I'm learning. These two ounce. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, you found something? Uh, we got something here. Oh, and we're about to give up and Danny kept Persistence pays off, folks. I kept doing an OG. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Okay. It's like, where'd it go? There it is. Oh my goodness. Wow. There it is. I would have killed you. Oh, that would have broke your neck, shattered your. It, it would have caved in the front of your head. Look at that thing. And that's hard cast lead. That's traumatic brain injury right there. Yes. Yeah, it was all tucked over here in the side, kind of in behind us. That's a... I, I, we, we all poked around in there. Nope, it's not in there. There it is. Sure as, sure as heck. I was trying to give it the OG finger wiggle. And that's, <laughs> that's when I found it. Doris, what do you think? It's off in the left pocket. <laughs> Ouch. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I think it would, these would work really well on bear. Any large animal that's attacking you elephant elephant cape buffalo t-rex oh 